Welcome to the ITU studio at GSR 23, the global symposium for regulators being held in Sharm el-Sheikh in Egypt. We've got the great pleasure of being joined in the studio now by Emilia Nikimbua, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the Communications Regulatory Authority of Namibia. Mr. Kimbua, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much for having me. Now, I just wanted to ask you really about, uh, the, let's start off by talking about GSR 23, mm -hmm. uh, your, your presence here why you think it's an important event and uh, what you hope uh, might come from it. So um, we, we came obviously as, as the regulatory authority of Namibia to participate. Um, we find the GSR as a valuable initiative in that it sort of sets the tone for us regulators in terms of the guidelines that we must follow, the best approaches, but also because it creates a platform where we can share experiences with other regulators, share opportunities, share knowledge. So it's really a learning experience um, for us as regulators and it gives us a great platform um, to be able to just reinvent ourselves and ensure that we are focusing on the right stuff. Um, so in addition to that, we have also will also be participating in the discussion on affordability of devices, which is very close to the work that we are doing because we believe that universal connectivity is not meaningful if consumers are not able to afford the devices to enjoy the transformation that comes with um, ICTs. Exactly. And what are the major challenges at the moment and, and opportunities as well in Namibia with regards to telecommunications? So with Namibia, um, we currently enjoy 89% 4G coverage, which is great. But what we have realized is that out of the 2.2 million active subscribers that we have, only about 27% actually utilize data. And this is because there's a limitation both in terms of the price of data, but also the affordability of devices. So we are really exploring that as a challenge to see how we can bring both costs down if um, digital transformation is to become meaningful for our citizens. So many, many people have got very d or devices that are very limited within terms of, uh, of their, their data. Is that right? Yes, that's particularly because of the cost of the devices. It's not affordable for many of our households. And this is why we've started working um, with our minister to see how we can bring down the cost of, of not only the data, but also the devices um, to ensure that our citizens are able to be part of digital transformation. Absolutely. And what about um, youth and, and, and gender? So tell us a little bit about what the situation is with regards to uh, young people and uh, access to computers and uh, to uh, obviously, you know, to uh, smartphones, etc. Um, and, and also about uh, the, the balance, you know, is there a, a, a gender imbalance in terms of connectivity there as well? Not so much. I think the imbalance comes in when you speak about the utilization of the uh, technology. And this is why we currently started an initiative on digital literacy so that we can focus particularly on young people to educate them not only how to utilize the devices, but also on the opportunities that exist within the ICT ecosystem for them. Our countries face a lot of unemployment challenges and we just believe that some of these can be resolved if the focus is really on digital literacy and highlighting the opportunities that come with the ICT ecosystem. What about access to government services? Are, main, are they mainly online or they, they still require a physical presence? Some of them are online, like we recently just launched uh, with our Ministry of Home Affairs where the passports and the IDs can be applied to and the visas, you can do those applications online. Um, the government also has a big drive on e-government services, collaborating also with the public sector and the private sector to ensure that they really understand the benefits of digital transformation and that we complement that drive by our government to ensure that um, we have as many services online online as possible. And investment in infrastructure, how is that going with regards to uh, particularly rural communities that obviously tend to be the ones that uh, are the hardest to reach? Over the past two years, we have seen a huge decline in the investment, of in in investment into infrastructure. 
But what we have done from the beginning of this year is we have started to release spectrum to the operators, but we are imposing conditions with that spectrum for them to take services to the rural communities. And we hope that that initiative will actually um, take off quite well so that we can see more and more of our remote areas um, becoming connected especially because Namibia is a very vast country, but we're also densely populated. So it's a huge challenge um, to ensure connectivity. We've also started looking at uh, utilizing satellite to bridge some of the gaps, especially for those areas that are very um, remote. And we are very excited because we have entered into some agreements with satellite operators where it's the same device, but it hands over from terrestrial to satellite. And we hope that that will really assist us um, to bridge the gap. Looking at, um, at the future in terms of the landscape, what do you think that will look like in Namibia, let's say in 10 years time, or what would you hope it will look like? We're actually very excited about um, the future because we believe that if we're able to implement a lot of the initiatives that we're working on right now, we would um, see Namibia becoming a real digitized society in terms of having the right skills, but also um, in creating the content and the services that are required in order for Namibians to enjoy a full um, online experience. So we are very, very positive about the future. And we believe that if you visit us in 10 years, you'll be very amazed at the opportunities that we'll have on the ground. Well, we hope to visit you uh, well before that, but uh, certainly, absolutely, we, we, we wish you all the very best for the future. Thank you very much for joining us in the studio today and hopefully we'll catch up with you very soon indeed. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And don't forget, we've got plenty more interviews on the ITU YouTube channel as well as our podcast channels. And for further information, go to www.itu.int. Thank you very much. <laughs>